Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Akanksha and I, I have with me Abby Suresh. We are the product managers at uh, Microsoft and today is another installment in the series that we are doing to introduce SharePoint Embedded that is currently in public preview. So in this talk, we are going to go a little bit into how administration works for SharePoint Embedded. What are the administrative security and compliance tools that we provide for our SharePoint Embedded customers? Uh, and who is the admin persona that we are talking about? Uh, I will go through some of the concepts and uh, do a demo on the administrative capabilities, and then Abby will demo the security and compliance capabilities on SharePoint Embedded. With that, um, let me just go through. If you haven't yet come across SharePoint Embedded, I'm just going to do a quick recap. SharePoint Embedded is an API only headless version of SharePoint for your custom applications. SharePoint Embedded creates a dedicated partition in within your M365 tenant to store files and documents. And because it is in the M365 tenant, you get a lot of the features and capabilities that come with M365, such as co content management, security and compliance, file experiences in, in, in your app. Uh, so everything is content AI ready and is all powered by Microsoft Graph API. So let me quickly take you through the persona that we are specifically talking about here. Uh, we will start with a tenant where the development of the SharePoint embedded application happens. This tenant is the developer tenant, and there are two Uber uh, personas here. The developer admin who sets up the tenant, who sets up billing profile maybe, uh, and the developers who are creating the SharePoint embedded application. Once this application is ready to be registered, it is registered in the consuming tenant. Uh, here also there are two Uber personas, consuming tenant admin who registers and manages the application, and then the users of the tenant who are creating containers and storing content in the application. In this talk, we will zoom into the consuming tenant admin on the consuming tenant uh, uh, and the capabilities that we provide to this consuming tenant admin to make sure that the data in the tenant follows organization security, compliance, and re regulatory re uh, requirements of the tenant. So now who is playing the role of a consuming tenant admin? For SharePoint Embedded, we have added a new role known as the SharePoint Embedded Administrator who will be able to manage all SharePoint Embedded containers. This role is currently available in Entra and M365 Admin Center. Customers who want to keep SharePoint Embedded application management separate than SharePoint can assign this role to a user. Uh, tenants who do not want to keep this uh, management separate than SharePoint, they can assign um, both SharePoint embedded admin role and SharePoint embedded, sorry, SharePoint, uh, SharePoint admin and SharePoint embedded admin role to the same user, and the same user will be able to manage everything. As usual, global admins can manage containers just like they can manage sites, so there's no changes there. I will not go through the whole list, but here are all the things that a SharePoint embedded admin uh, or a global admin can manage. Now, because the SharePoint embedded application resides within the M365 tenancy, as I mentioned, that all the capabilities that are available for SharePoint and OneDrive will also extend for SharePoint embedded application. Um, some of the things that you'll see uh, admin can manage at a tenant level, like audit, uh, audit logs, retention policies, con conditional access policies will work for SharePoint embedded applications as well that are in the same tenant. Just like sites, we also provide capability to manage containers, like viewing containers, adding labels to a containers, deleting containers, restoring containers. I'm sure um, sounds very familiar to sites. So we wanted to keep the experience very similar for containers as we have for sites. So how is an admin going to manage the containers? So we provide three different tools. The first one is our old friend PowerShell. 
uh, we make uh, this is the first tool that is already available in production um, and uh, we provide commands very similar to SharePoint sites. These commands will enable um, admins to administer containers created in their tenant and I will demo some of these commandlets uh, just after this slide. The second tool we provide is the SharePoint admin site where um, admins can also see containers just like they see active sites and deleted sites. They'll be able to see active containers and deleted containers. And finally, for customers who are interested in building their own administration tool, we provide admin graph APIs to our customers. And this will be available in the next uh, three to four months as well. So let's dive quickly into the demo uh, of all the commandlets for administration that we have. So here I am logged in as a, sorry. Here I am logged in as a global admin and connected to this uh, to the site where uh, my uh, SharePoint embedded application is. Sorry, the tenant where my SharePoint embedded ad, uh, application is. Now, as an admin, if I want to see all the SharePoint embedded applications that are registered in my tenant, they can simply do a get SPO application commandlet, and this will list out the two applications that are in my tenant, the Contoso and Northwind traders. These are specifically SharePoint embedded applications. Now from here, if I want to see all the containers that are created in one of my application uh, as an admin, I can again do get SPO container, add the application ID that I'm interested in. And with this, this list will give all the containers that are created in my tenant. Now a tenant may have a lot more containers than what I am showing here. Uh, but an app, uh, admin can just see all the list. Now they can do various things here. For example, if they want to see all the containers that uh, uh, um, all the containers that have no owners, because you know there is some compliance guidelines that they have to follow. In sorry, in that case, they can just run a sort object on the containers, and they'll just uh, see all the containers with zero con uh, owner counts on top, and they can take action on that. Now, if uh, if they want to see a, a detail of a specific container, they can go into get SPO container identity and take any container. I'll take this container since it doesn't have a sensitivity label and as an admin, I may be interested to see the details of this container. So this is where they will see all the information like what is the storage of the container, uh, the label of the container, who are the owners, managers, readers, writer on the container, when was it created, and various different policies like um, uh, external sharing policies on the container. This is this uh, this commandlet will also also show the site URL of the container, um, and this is what the admin can take and further uh, go into say tools like Purview and make sure that you know um, right compliance policies are added through it with the help of this site URL. Now, since this container did not have um, um, a sensitivity label, I will go ahead and add a, uh, a sensitivity label uh, using a set SPO container commandlet. Now you will uh, notice that the commandlets are very similar to site, just like get SPO site and get a set SPO site. We have set SPO container and get SPO container. So with this identity, I will just go ahead and add the sensitivity label to this. I'll just use the common one used here because my organization may have a policy that every container should have a sensitivity label. With this, I will again check the site details and you will see that the sensitivity label is already added to this container and the container will follow all the rules of the label that was added. Similarly, just an example, uh, another example of how um, uh, a, a admin can delete a container. Let's say we have a container that an admin does not want in the tenant because it does not follow the guidelines. This one does not have sensitivity label. In that case, I can just do a remove 
uh, SPO container. And it will ask me for a confirmation and I can see um, the deleted container using as get SPO deleted container. So here it is. I had deleted the storage capacity con container because it did not follow the org guideline. Similarly, there are many more um, PowerShell commandlets that are already available. For example, you can recover a container. You can uh, uh, permanently delete a container. We are also adding capabilities to add users to a container. Um, so uh, very similar to sites, but these capabilities are already available in production. Uh, so from here, Abby will take you through how they can use this information to uh, add more security and compliance details to a container. Abby, go ahead. Thank you, Kamsha. So we are going to be switching gears now and talking about security and compliance features that are supported today for content that resides in SharePoint embedded containers. So we, as Akanksha mentioned, we are trying to achieve parity between what is already existing in SharePoint online content and the content that's going to reside on SharePoint embedded. So we support like most of the compliance and security features that you're already familiar with, like audit, e-discovery, DLP, DLM, um, sensory labels at the file level, at the container level, blog download policies, access policies at the container levels. We are working on enabling sophisticated security policies such as uh, RAC, information barrier, domain restriction, and so many, many more. And they should be supported um, within the next couple of months. So super exciting. And the main takeaway that I want everybody to take, uh, you know, to understand from this demo is that most of the security and compliance features that you're using today on content that resides in SharePoint Online will be at parity with the content that resides in SharePoint Embedded. So we are going to be looking at the demos that Akanksha is showing on screen from the lens of a compliance manager. So we are logged in as a compliance manager. We are in the M365 Purview portal, and I'm just trying to replicate a real life scenario wherein a compliance manager may want to look at all the audit events uh, that were performed by a specific user on all file activities within a specific date and time range. So I'm looking at all the activities such as like accessing a file, uploading it, deleting it, modifying it, so on and so forth for a specific user. So uh, we're just gonna look at um, this from the lens of a compliance admin for all content that was touched by this particular user. And you will notice that in the audit results that we are seeing, you will find all the key value pairs that are typically found for uh, content that resides in SharePoint Online. We've also taken the liberty to add three extra key value pairs, such as container ID, container type ID, and container instance ID. So you will see all of the individual key value pairs that you're already used to seeing. So if you're running a script of some sorts, it'll continue to work on content content that resides in SharePoint Embedded, you will also have the three extra container-related information that I was just talking about earlier. You can also get the container site URL from here. You can also download and export the CSV format of the audit log so that you can look at the um, audit log in more nuanced detail. You can export it. You can filter it based on like your business needs. So Akansha, keeping in mind the time, can we move on to yeah. the next demo, please? Thank you. Mm -hmm. OK, so now we are going to be looking. Uh, sorry, the next one, please. Yeah. I think. Yeah. OK, there we go. So the second demo is um, for e-discovery search. So in this page, we are opening up a Word document that actually resides on a SharePoint embedded container. We are going to be performing an e-discovery search for all documents, for all content that contains the keyword red fox that we see on screen. So again, I'm a compliance admin. I go uh, click on e-discovery standard to make sure there are no licensing issues, etc. So this is going to be a standard e-discovery search. And in here, if I just click on all SharePoint sites, this is going to ensure that it's searching for all the content that's stored in all SharePoint sites and all SharePoint embedded containers. But here I'm restricting it to just one containers URL. I just took the URL from the document because it opened up on Office Online, removed the encoding and just pasted it. If that was not available, I could have used Akanksha's like partial modules to do that. And now I'm initiating a e-discovery search for content that resides in just that one container and has the keyword red fox. And we are just going to let the search run its course. 
and uh, we'll just wait for the results to show up. As we can see, there are two results that are showing up. So let's just like export the e-discovery report and see what are the results, because we know for sure that we are supposed to get one of them, right? Like the brainstorming techniques document that we had opened up earlier did contain the keyword red fox. OK, so we're just waiting for the e-discovery export to open up in our local desktop, and I'm just going to open up the results. There we go. So this is the Excel results report, and I'm just going to open up the document path so that we can see, hey, where exactly do these documents reside? What's up with the two results? So as we can see, the first one is as expected. It uh, It's the brainstorming techniques document that resides within the document library of the specific container that we restricted the e-discovery search to. The second one is definitely more interesting because we can see that this document resides in the preservation hole library of the same container, meaning this container was placed on a retention hole. A document named brainstorming techniques resided in that container, got deleted, and instead of being fully deleted, it got moved to the preservation hole library, meaning retention hole works out of the box on all content that is stored in SharePoint embedded, just like how SharePoint online supports retention. So this uh, was something that I wanted to show. So eDiscovery search basically just told us that you know, like retention hold works out of the box. OK, so I know I'm a little bit over time. Please bear with me. This last demo is like super interesting. So I'm logged in uh, with the necessary credentials on Postman. I'm leveraging Microsoft Graph API that lets us download an item. And as we can see, the content on this particular SharePoint embedded container was able to get downloaded successfully. I'm going to set a block download policy on this container. Again, I'm using the container ID from Akanksha's partial that you're showing us earlier. So now that the policy is set to true, I'm again querying this uh, download item API. And as we can see, we got a 403 forbidden error. We got the access denied messaging as well. So I want to tweak the block download policy just a little bit more. And I want to say, hey, let the block download policy still be set to true for all users, but for the container owner, allow them and exclude them from the block download policy. So that's what I'm doing here. So the policy is still enabled for everyone, but just not for the container owner. And as we can see again, we get the 200 OK. We are able to download it. So that's all the time that we have today. Thank you so much for tuning in, and feel free to post any questions that you may have on SharePoint Embedded. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.